Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Courtney. Today I have got a restoration hardware dupe for you. So I've been making a lot of um, DIYs and little crafts for my new craft room that is currently being renovated. I'm in this space right now. Um, and I came across this five book stack on their website. It was $125. And I knew I wanted something kind of similar as a decor item to put in my built-ins but I did not want to spend that so I made mine for five bucks um, I customized it and got it how I wanted it so today I'm going to show you how I did it this is a very simple project to do I'm also going to share with you if you're not a fan of painting books how you can kind of get this look without having to paint your book sand it distress it and still get that feel so without further ado let's get into the supplies and tutorial and stay tuned till the end so you can see some more DIY shout outs from my subscribers subscribers and followers. Let's go. For this project, you will need five hardback books from Dollar Tree, some chalk paint in whatever color you choose, Mod Podge and a foam brush, and some twine. Okay, so I will be painting my books, but I did want to show you a quick little tip here if you didn't want to paint your book. Simply take off the book jacket, and most book jackets I find are white inside, and you're basically just going to turn it inside out, we'll call it, and then put it around your book, and bam, you've got yourself a white book. A lot of people like to wrap their books with the brown paper or fabric or burlap, and this just gives you another different texture and a different look. So here you go. This is an option for you if you want to save your book from being painted. Now um, this is kind of what it looks like if you want to see all five books next to each other all in paper. It looks just like this and then you can go even further if you want to get a distressed look for this book. All you would need to do is use some brown paint or you could use some cream wax and um, simply just take a paintbrush and then paint on the edges, paint the cover, paint wherever, and you'll get yourself a distressed look that way again without actually painting or sanding your book. To paint these, I am simply just going to take off the cover and then I'm gonna paint um, probably the spine at least two coats and then the end books I really only need to paint each of the edges um, or the sides I should say so here I'm showing you the spine twice this side twice and that side because the rest of the books are just gonna be you know against each other so you don't necessarily need to give them full coat so now I'm gonna go through and paint one coat of this white chalk paint and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like Okay, here are the books after one coat. Um, these that are red, you can, the, it, the camera's probably not picking it up, but it is totally throwing a pink hue with just one coat on it. Um, I have shared before when I do book projects that when I go to Dollar Tree, I typically take the jackets off and try to find the books that are either white, cream, tan, or even gray. But I will say um, with these black ones, if you're wanting a distressed look, black would be an option to go just doing one coat. I feel like it's given it a nice little distressed look. So um, I guess black would be another good color if you want distressed without having to sand. But I'm definitely going to probably have to go back and paint this whole thing a second coat. So um, I'll check back in after I have painted the second coat. Th these are the two books that were red covered. They're still pink. Um, I know they're looking more white on camera, but they're still pink. So they're definitely going to need a third coat. Um, I think for the third, I'm just going to paint just this because these books are actually going to be in the middle. So you won't really even see the sides. So I'm just going to concentrate on getting this and the little lip part painted and covered as well as the top um, on them. Because again, the bottom doesn't really matter. It won't show. So yeah, I'm gonna keep going. These, um, you can kind of tell second coat, I didn't paint the sides, but I did a second coat. And then on these two, I did the middle and then one side, cause like I said, on the ends, you're gonna want those fully covered, so. Okay, going on a third coat for the red. I think the black ones are fine after just two coats. Okay, here we go. In order to make labels that fit, I'm just very quickly going to measure the length and the width of each of the spine. I have two different books here sizes, so I'm going to go ahead and do both of those and then I'll be able to go down to the computer and make my labels for my books. 
All right, guys, let me show you how I'm going to make these labels. So I'm in Microsoft Word just under new document. I'm going to quickly show you what the font I'm using. It's called 1942 Report, and I got it from defont.com. I'll link it down below. It's a place where you can download free fonts for personal use. So I'm going to just blow this up so you can kind of see, oops, what it looks like. All right, um, here we go. So it kind of has that typewriter, old ink feel to it. Um, I really like it. So that's what I'm gonna use. But to make my labels, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to insert text box, draw text box. And then all I'm gonna do is based on those measurements that I took of the spines, I'll just make my box whatever I need it to be. So the length or height of the spine was eight inches. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to six because I don't want my label to go the full length of the spine. And then the width was one, so I'm gonna cut it a little bit in. So basically now, anything you put inside of this box here um, will fit on your spine. So you can basically go in and just type, and I just made up like book titles and um, things like that. So you can do, um, let's see, make it a little bigger so you guys can actually see what I'm doing here. Ooh, that may be too big, okay. Um, so if you wanted to do just a word going down, you would just center it like this, you know, like that. Um, but there you go. So this is how I'm gonna do it. And then I'll just make several different text boxes and then I'll go through and show you how I printed it out. Okay, so to make my labels, I am using some of this brown paper that you can buy from Dollar Tree. Um, I'm just going to be honest, and I'm going to mention this again in a minute. The reason I did this was A, because I wanted the look of this brown paper, but B, I'm just going to be totally honest, impatience. That is what this results in, impatience. Um, I didn't have the paper that I needed here, and I did not want to go to the store to get it, so I decided to make my own paper. So in just a second, I'm going to show you how this plan turned out. All right, this is how it came out of my printer. Um, it jammed both times because I had two sheets to print out. Did it come out exactly how I wanted it? Absolutely, because I'm actually gonna crinkle this some more. Um, this was the other one, you can kind of see how it turned out, it printed it, but again, it jammed. Would I recommend doing it this way? Absolutely not. I'm gonna go on the record saying, don't do it this way. I did it because, I'm just gonna be honest, impatient. I didn't have the paper I needed here and I didn't wanna settle for any kind of other paper. So that's why I did it, but again, don't, um, this is one of those times where, you know, don't practice what I preach here because I don't want to be responsible for broken printers because I don't want to get hate mail. So anyway, um, okay, well, I, I don't know what to say, guys. It turned out exactly how I wanted it. But again, tread with caution if you decide to go this route or just go get the paper that you can print out exactly how you want um, if you're a little more patient than me. Okay, guys, I'm going to keep going now. Okay, and now the more logical option for making your labels would be just to go ahead and stamp them. Um, get some letters and stamp your titles that way. The only downfall to this is um, you would have to try to, if you wanted small font, you'd have to try to figure that out. But um, this is another option. So my middle book, I knew I just wanted something without words. And so these are just some stamps that I picked up from Dollar Tree quite a while ago. And I decided just to use black ink and I'm just simply going to stamp these um, with some flowers. And then um, I'm gonna keep on moving along to get these labels ready. And after looking at the labels, I decided I wanted the edges of these to not be so straight. <laughs> um, I wanted them a little bit more rough. So I grabbed my little bucket of scissors. These are scissors that I picked up in a pack from Michaels quite a while ago, but it basically, you just use them and it'll give you a different look around edges. So I'm kind of just arranging how I want the book titles to go. And then now I'm just gonna kind of play with these scissors to see which one I like. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just trim all four sides of these labels to get them a little more roughed up looking.
okay, now I've got them all arranged. I've got the labels looking exactly how I want them. And now I'm ready to go ahead and start applying them to the books. To apply my labels, I am simply going to use some of this matte Mod Podge and I'm only putting it on the back of the label because I don't want my books to have any type of sheen to them. Even though it's matte, you can still kind of see sometimes um, when something is sealed. So I'm just, like I said, only just going to put it on the back and that way it keeps its kind of rusticy rough feel to it. And so I'm going to go through and do this for each of the books and then um, I will move on to my next step. Okay, so if you're a book lover, you may want to look away right now. Yes, I'm beating these books with a little hammer um, that I got from um, Dollar Tree. Uh, by the way, these things are great for paint cans is what I use to close my paint cans. Um, the name of it is what is it called? It's, I'm totally drawing a blank. There's an actual name for this. It's not a hammer. It's a, oh geez, I can't even think what it is. But anyway, so this is actually going to give me a distressed look. Um, and as you can kind of see, it's roughing it up a little bit, exactly where I want it to be roughed up. Sorry, the camera's bouncing. This is what happens when you bang stuff on your table. But anyway, uh, I'm just going to go through and beat these books up. I'm sorry. Please don't hate me for those of you thinking, oh my gosh, please don't hate me. Um, the books are still readable and that's what's important. So, um, anyway, I'm going to go through and do this and then I'm almost done with this project. All right, still beating up my books. I went ahead and decided just to bang on the top, just in case you'll be able to see that when I put it in my built-ins. And then I just took some twine and basically I looked at the picture on restoration hardware and, um, just kind of checked out how they tied it and it's basically how you would tie ribbon around a boxed present and then that's my last step guys then this project is finished all right and this is how the books turned out I did like it like this however I wasn't quite happy with the three middle books so I pulled out these little uh, metal letters that I have they're used for stamping leather and things like that and I basically used them as a stamp to create some new labels and this is the finished product the two end books did stay the same but the three in the middle as you can see there one that says create creative on the cheap and DIY for dummies I just redid those and yes the E is upside down on the word create but I kind of liked it like that. So there you go, guys. This is my finished product. I cannot wait to put it in my new craft room. Please stay tuned for some shout outs. Some of them are dupes from my Facebook group. I really appreciate you guys' support. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time. Bye.